Hey everyone, it's Greg Blatt from SBI. I'm here for another episode of Revenue Growth Help Desk. I'm super excited to be joined today uh, by Bob Layton. Bob is the CRO of Digital Defense. I believe, Bob, you're out of Austin, Texas. I'm in Dallas, so welcome, uh, Bob, and lo love to uh, get involved in, uh, with the chat and talk about how you're working through the pandemic. Yeah, no, thanks, Greg. I, what I would tell you is, uh, well, first of all, thanks for inviting me to spend this time with you. Um, secondly, I don't think this is uh, anything that any of us ever put in our plans. I don't think anyone ever um, plans for a pandemic in, in the sales environment. We just simply understand that if something were to go bump in the night, we'd have to respond. But this is a real, uh, real curveball. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, the exposure that we're getting in lots of conversations are around the framework that we have up on the screen. And, and you know, first, how do I protect my business? How do I engage with my teams? How do I manage this whole social distancing and, main, and maintain connection to my community, both internal and external? So I'd love to start out there. Tell me a little bit about what you're what you've done over the past four to eight weeks. Um, and what you're thinking about doing in the coming weeks. Yeah, no, great question. So we're a SaaS offering and we're hosted up out of AWS's cloud and then we're also available in, in all of the other cloud marketplaces. We also sell um, through our uh, channel. Uh, we're a channel exclusive, uh, you know, partner model. And so we're able to do channel checks. We're also able to understand from, from quotes and, and SaaS signups exactly what the volume and, and the flow of business is. So it's easy for us to analyze the business. What we're seeing over the last uh, couple of weeks is um, really just deals slowing down and pushing out. We have had a few accelerate uh, in the instance of some uh, healthcare institutions where, you know, they had use it or lose it monies. They had, you know, emergencies to deal with. And so they accelerated some plans. But so far, I would not say it's uh, it's gloom and doom uh, for us. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe not for the entire security uh, landscape. But uh, we're definitely trying to redo, reset uh, forecasting and get to a level of truth. Yeah, it's great um, and, and, and obvious and, and lots of organizations going through the same. So tell me a little bit about how you're managing your team, your community differently than, than you have in the past. Tell me a little bit about your organization and how you're set up. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we, we sell globally and we've got a couple of uh, global partners and then we've got a lot of uh, partners through the U.S., Canada, LATAM and U.K., Ireland. But um, I'm actually hiring. I'm hiring for roles and I haven't slowed that down. And we had a really strong first quarter. We're ahead of our, our plan. And so I'm now onboarding people, Greg, that I have interviewed and I've never actually uh, shook their hand, but I'm, I'm onboarding them and getting them in so that we can build a closer connectivity with our, our channel and, uh, and go out there to help them co-sell price and package and really deliver that value through. So we're not slowing down our plans uh, in any way. And this is, you know, all adding to the revenue protection side of the curve right now. Yeah. And anything different on how you're connecting with your reps? Are you doing different? Is there a different cadence? Are you doing daily stand-ups? Are you running happy hours? Tell me a little bit about what's different day to day. Well, we haven't gone down the happy hour route yet. Uh, I'm sure at some point we'll, everyone will enjoy that. But uh, right now we're just really doing daily check-ins. Uh, we're forming working groups uh, to where we can really consider some of the things that are going on inside the business. And it's a great time to, to retune and get prepared for when we go and execute in the second half of the year. So I've got everyone spun up and, and working hard, even if they can't go out and get on a plane or a train or visit face to face with a partner. And in terms of that, do you see, you know, we, we talk a lot about effectiveness and efficiency and the balance, right? And deal optimization is different now than it was. Um, standing up a, a deal desk and what the deal desk is today compared to what it was maybe even four or six weeks ago. Do you have a deal desk? Are you thinking about standing one up? And if so, has it changed at all? Well, that, that's a good question, and uh, I was just in a meeting earlier this morning about that whole process. So our deals desk is really informal, but we're really going to put some more rigor into that moving forward. It, this, this pandemic has taught us that, that it's a great thing for us to reconsider. Um, 
but we are going back and looking at deals and we do have rigor in our sales cycle. So we understand where deals lie. And now we're just going back to understand where we need to move them along. Um, you know, what, what, are, what is the gate to move from this stage to this stage? And so we're going back and looking at the pipeline, you know, by stage and understanding how we can continue to advance it and how we can, uh, again, optimize those deals, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, as it relates to that, um, one of the things that um, we do a lot of work here at SBI is, is decisions driven by data and specifically around segmentation data. How are you looking at your markets? How do you segment your markets and look at potential by market? Have you done segmentation prior to COVID-19? And if so, how has all that segmentation data been revised? And if not, do you think really quickly looking at segmenting the market could help your salespeople in the field be more um, successful? So to have a really good go-to-market, you have to have um, not only your, your market segmented, but your existing customer base segmented. And it, it might be by the, the lens of what products or services they consume from you so you can understand your value. It might be where your, your price and your partner channel resonates in the market, where you can get new bookings or what your retention rates are. But here's what I would tell you that we're going through right now, Greg, is we're looking at the size of our customers and also geographically where they are. And what we're trying to understand is, is there a portion of our customer base that's at risk of not coming back from this, this COVID-19, right? Um, I think a lot of uh, managed service providers are, are faced with that right now, especially if they're dealing with, um, you know, less than 100 employee companies or, or maybe less than 500 and, and you know, maybe even up, up higher in the scale. But we don't know what that, those data points are right now. We're really kind of mining that. And then that's going to inform our execution plan for the back half of the year. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, we any of the organizations where we've done segmentation work for, we're going back and taking a look at that and seeing if there's a different way to prioritize and score those markets, like hospitality may have a lower score in today's market versus four or six weeks ago, and healthcare, or uh, in, in your case, um, uh, security software companies are high growth. And so there's a high, a higher potential um, than there was maybe in the past. So t tell me how that relates to coverage. You know, are you thinking about looking at coverage differently for the back half of the year? Do you think about maybe realigning your sales organization around a different coverage model based on you know, COVID-19? Or are you going to run the same coverage model through the rest of the year? I don't see our coverage model changing. What I do see is, is the level of intimacy that we're driving for through our, our partner program changing, right? Getting more into those conversations around pricing and packaging and helping them understand how they can deliver um, better proof of value reporting, for example, through, through to their customers, right? So on the back half of the year, I think customers who have been stressed uh, end users who have been stressed by this COVID-19 pandemic are going to look back at their managed service provider, their MSP, and say, hey, thanks for telling me how many tickets I have open and how many of them still persist or whether or not you replaced something in the network, but I, I need more. I, I need you to really demonstrate to me that you're improving my, my posture uh, from, from a vulnerability standpoint. And that's what we deliver through our frontline uh, cloud uh, and our GPA scorecard. So we're getting a great response out of out of the uh, the MSP market in, in looking at that. So that's what we're really going to do. We're not going to change the coverage model. We're going to drive greater in, uh, intimacy with them, and uh, and look for ways to expand the uh, the program elements. Great, that's great. Yeah, and and that's uh, that's fantastic that you're able to hold your coverage model and your go to market plan based on the type of business that you're in. Others are looking at it you know, very differently and really looking at big changes for H2 versus H1 um, in order to, to be as effective as, as possible. Last question as it relates to the framework that's on the screen and, and how you're thinking about it, which is all the way to the right, which is, you know, thinking through incentives and metrics and how you measure the business and the effectiveness of your sales team and, and how you're enabling the, the new sales folks that you're bringing on in this uh in these uncertain times 
are you thinking about different ways of incenting for the back half of the year or measuring the success of your teams? Uh, absolutely, right? So, I mean, just like we could have uh, customers and partners go through a stumbling, we could also have some of our individual reps, depending on their territory and what their mix of customers look like, they could have a bump or a, uh, a, a dip in, in compensation as well. So we're reevaluating exactly how we instrument the compensation plan, um, you know, using some different metrics, not just new bookings. If we're seeing some, you know, pockets of, of disruption for a particular rep. We don't want to cause turnover and lose the people we've invested in. So we would find creative ways to incent, um, you know, wh whether it's, you know, educating new sellers, whether it's it's recruiting new MSP partners, whether it's driving, you know, win, new wind wires and case studies. We'll, we'll find ways that, that still build on the value that we're, uh, we're aiming for in our program. Great. Any any specifics or recommendations based on what you're doing that might be valuable for your peer group to think about it as it relates to either a specific incentive change that you might consider or a different measurement around you know qualitative aspect. Let's call it uh, pipeline velocity. You know something like that. Yeah. Are, are there anything specific that you would give some guidance on? Well, what I would encourage everybody to do is just don't don't overreact to what's going on right now stay the course continue on with your hiring plans as best you're able and when you think about the ramp up time of a of a new person on on your sales team don't go purely by by the new bookings take a look at some other things where you can actually get them to focus on i, I mentioned intimacy with, with the partners how can you focus on the intimacy of the partners and how are you going to measure that maybe it's getting three new sellers uh, to, to quote their first deal. Maybe it's to get several sellers um, to close their first deal in a particular segment of the market. There's lots of ways you can instrument that, and that's a place where you can stack up some compensation, either in uh, spot bonuses, you know, deal incentive bonuses, et cetera. Great. That's great. Well, that's really helpful and uh, super interesting, um, and and I, I think your business and what's going on in the security uh, software security spaces, especially as it relates to selling security on cloud with all that's happening um, with COVID-19. Uh, you're, you're in an interesting, interesting times for the business. So really appreciate the, the time, appreciate some of the insights and lo lo always love connecting with you. So thank you for your time today. Yeah, I appreciate the friendship and uh, have me back sometime as we get into the later half of the year, Greg, and I look forward to giving you an update. Fantastic. Thanks for your time, Bob. Have a great, have a great uh, rest of the day and a, re a great weekend. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're 